Hey guys, welcome back to another end curse tutorial. Today's end curse tutorial is part number five in my making snake and end curses tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to be laying the groundwork for all of the drawable classes that we'll be using, such as the apple class, which will represent the apple that the snake eats, and the snake class itself. Um, we're going to be creating a class called drawable that uh, those classes will extend and allow us to abstract away a lot of the concepts like each of those has a Y variable, each of those has an X variable, each of those has a character that represents it on the screen. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be building that interface and implementing it into our game board um, uh, that we've already created that class. So as always, if you guys like these videos, consider subscribing down below so you see them right as they come out. Uh, consider giving me a thumbs up, and if you have any questions or comments, put those down below. I try to respond to them, uh, to all of them. So let's get started. As always, I recommend you guys go and check out the previous tutorials first, just otherwise none of this will really make any sense. Also, if you're not familiar with end curses at all, I recommend you check out my other series as well. Um, in our previous tutorial, we went over the game loop, it's, which is basically how, you know, every single turn of the game goes through a game loop. Every game kind of has a game loop. It basically takes input, updates the state, and then redraws the screen, and then does that until the game's over. That's what this loop does. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is creating a drawable interface. What this drawable interface does is basically it creates a class that allows us to abstract away a lot of details like the Y value, the X value, and the character representation of, for instance, the apple or the snake. Uh, both of those things have a Y value and an X value and a representation. And if we create this drawable class, we can have those um, model classes extend the drawable class, and that way we can have them both essentially be represented by a drawable. Um, and that's helpful when we look at the uh, the view class, where we just want the view to take a um, take a drawable class that has a y value and x value and a representation, um, and figure out what to do with it. So, um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be implementing this drawable class. Um, it's actually going to be a pretty simple class. It's going to have a few public methods, and it's going to have some protected variables. So the variables we're going to have are uh, x and y. You could use rows and calls instead. Um, I use y and x or x and y because the library uses get y x, things like that. So it just makes more sense to me. But you can use whatever makes sense to you. Um, then also we're going to um, have a chart type and we're going to call it icon. Um, that's just the way I think of it. The icon is what represents the, the, the character on the screen. I don't know. Um, that's what's going to be holding our screen representation. Then as far as method goes, methods go, we should create a, um, a default uh, empty method that, you know, uh, sorry, what do they call it? An empty, empty parameter constructor, default constructor. I think that's what it's called. Um, so for our default constructor, we want to set y uh, equal to x equal to zero. So that'll set both y and x equal to zero. So in a default case, we'll just put it in the top left corner. And we'll set our icon equal just to uh, a space or a blank character. Um, I think that's a pretty decent default case. Then um, for our parameter constructor, we'll have one that takes a y value, an x value, and a char type value. And what we'll do is say, well, this y equals y, this x equals x, and this icon equals char, like that. Then we'll need a few methods to actually access our variables down here, yx and icon. So um, we'll create a method called, or sorry, a method that returns an integer called get x, which returns the x value. So this, or sorry, return x. Oops. Then we'll just copy that and have get y. And then we'll have a chart type, get icon like that, return icon, and that has to be lowercase y. All right, so that's pretty much all we'll need for this class. This class basically allows us to create something that we know no matter what has a y value, an x value, and a representation. So that's all you need to represent on the screen. You just need to know where it is and what to show. Um, so now that we've done that, we can come over to our board class and implement this, this helpful drawable class. So what we can do is, instead of having to pass void add at and then explicitly pass a y value, an x value, and a char, we can create a convenience method called void add, where we can pass it a drawable. Um, so we'll pass it a drawable, call it drawable like that, 
And what we'll do is we'll have this run the add at function, but we'll have it call, or we'll basically have it just use those uh, variables that we created for the drawable class. So drawable.getx, drawable.gety, or sorry, whoops, we could have reverse those, get y. X and then at the end we'll do drawable dot get icon. So this might need seem that helpful at first, but what this allows us to do is pass. So if Apple and Snake both uh, extend drawable, it allows us to pa pass both an apple or a snake to this draw this add function, and it'll know how to uh, add them to the screen. So essentially, it, it makes it a lot easier when it comes to okay, we have to draw something. What are we drawing? it's a drawable, so it knows exactly how to draw it. So if it's an apple, it knows how to represent on the screen. If it's a snake, it knows how to represent on the screen. And we don't have to write two methods, one for each model. So it gets pretty pretty helpful if you have a ton of models. Um, for this case, we only have two, I think, that I can... At this point, that's what I'm planning on. But if you have like 30 different models, it's obvious how this can be very helpful. So you don't have to write a method for each individual class. Um, so now in order to actually test this out and show you that it's working, what we can do is in our void update state method in our snake game class, um, we can actually do board.add, so that new function we just added, or sorry, that new method we just added, um, and then we can pass it a drawable with position, I don't know, three, three, and then we're gonna use the hash symbol just because that's one that I like to use sometimes. Uh, one other thing we, we have to do really quickly is add, uh, include, draw our source drawable, HP, like that. And I'm just going to do that to all the other classes just to make sure. Sorry for the jump cut there. Uh, so I basically just went through and added include drawable.htp to those two files, snake game and board, um, and as well as here. Um, so now that that's all set, we should be able to make and run this. And you'll see after we press the first character, it'll display a character at position three down, uh, three across. So that's starting from the edge point. Um, so that would be zero and that would be zero. So three and three. Uh, and that's what we told it to do in the drawable class here. So... Um, or sorry, in the update state method with this drawable thing. So again, we could do this again. We could put one at three, five, and make it the at character. Again, we'll make and run. And now we have two symbols that's printing out. So um, essentially, uh, this is going to be this is going to make it a lot easier in the future to um, basically our snake class and our um, Apple class will extend this drawable class and it'll make it a lot easier to display them using our board class. Uh, so that, that ground works all laid and now in the next tutorial I'll probably start building either the Apple or the Snake. I haven't decided yet. Probably the Apple I think it's, it's a little simpler. But anyways I hope you guys liked this tutorial. As always uh, if you did consider giving it a thumbs up. If you had any questions comment down below and if you want to see these videos subscribe and turn on all notifications. I hope you guys have a great day and uh, I'll see you in the next one.